Good evening, everyone. Today is November 28, 2018, and I have a fun daily recap video for us today. We had a really interesting market situation and ended up being a really profitable day for us, and we have a lot that we can learn. So I'm going to go ahead and run through these trades and um, just always want to be constantly analyzing ourselves and our trades and see how we can be better. Today was a really strong day for us, finished up roughly $6,500 there, and I traded three stocks mainly. NVDA I traded as well, but ended up being a really small trade. Um, was still a positive trade nonetheless, and I'm gonna explain what happened and uh, what I was seeing in these markets to allow me to have a nice successful day. The first thing I wanna talk about is what happened with the overall market situation. Now today, right, uh, it was kind of late morning, early afternoon, some news came out about the Fed. Now it says Fed news release, but that's not exactly the case. Instead, Chairman Powell was actually speaking in New York City to an economics club, and he said some what we refer to as dovish comments. Now, what does that mean? Dovish means that um, you are more, you're interested more of a lenient uh, monetary policy. A hawkish uh, comment or a hawkish attitude means you are more interested in leaning towards continuing to tighten interest rates and tighten monetary policy and things like that. So he was speaking here um, and he said some things that uh, interest rates and markets and everything that's happening is everything's pretty neutral and this is a lot different from what he said about a month ago when he said that interest rates were well below and well behind what they needed to be he said I believe it was on the third of this month third uh, of November he said that uh, the market that you know interest rates have a lot of tightening a lot of raising to go before uh, you know things are neutral and that's a very hawkish thing for him to say and markets were very scared uh, as he implied that interest rates and would be would be hiked in the coming months. Well, today what he said set a lot of investors at ease and you can see that here from this big market spike here that happened midday. So this is what we call a pivot. I mean, that we I was actually you know very quite bearish and I was short on the markets, but we were able to pivot midday when this news was released and ended up being very successful. So, so let's go ahead and talk about how that related to my trading today. Now you'll notice here on Netflix um, that most importantly here, this is when the news was released. You can see here, I was actually short on Netflix to start the day. Uh, if you take a look at um, my first trades, they were actually shorts. Now I traded this quite a bit today and I traded it in a way that we call trend trading. Now you'll notice that Netflix really had two main trends today. We had this initial downtrend today, okay? And this is, this is very clear as we see consistently lower highs being made time and time and time again and uh, we see lower lows being made time and time again. So this is really a nice place for us uh, to ride that trend to the downside, and I did. I call these rinse and repeats where I would short cover, short cover, short cover, short cover. As long as that downtrend is intact like it was, it can end up paying us really nicely. Well, you'll start to notice here that I actually ended up getting long on Netflix right here. Okay, you'll notice this green arrow here. These are all my real verified trades that I took today, okay? Now you'll notice that I ended up getting long right here. And let me explain the reason for that. This was before, I ended up going long before, the, this was where the announcements was made right here. This is where I went long. So I ended up getting long on Netflix probably about 15, 20 minutes before uh, the Fed announcement came out. And let me explain why. Well, what you're often gonna see is that the initial trend that is created from markets will tend to reverse between the 30 and 60 minute mark um, of our of our overall markets. Now, the other thing we want to look for is a slowing down of the sell-off. Notice initially here out of the gate, the sell-off is really quite aggressive. And you'll see that while the trend is downwards, you'll see that it starts to tighten up a little bit here. You know, the, the crack below this low here was not nearly as significant as it was before when the market was making lower lows. It had a real heavy crack here. This one wasn't nearly as significant. We saw a buyer step in here. And as soon as I saw this buyer step in, I wanted to get what I call some long exposure in the markets. So I did that. And then it just so happened that the news also came out as well. And uh, we saw this very significant spike to the upside from Netflix. Now, after this point, um, it was just a matter of me being patient. Now, I, you'll notice that even though the news came out, I didn't just buy and hold it all the way into close. I still traded it safely. What I mean by that is I would still sell on pops and look to re-enter on any dips that were provided. Anytime the significant news is released in our markets, there's going to always be a very significant initial reaction, be it to the upside or to the downside. What I mainly look for is the first pullback from that initial reaction, and we got that right here. You'll see that I did load up quite a bit here on this first pullback after that initial reaction. Markets continue to spike and then I was waiting. I took profits a little bit earlier than I would have liked. 
Um, I mean, in hindsight, everything was fine. Uh, the market was reacting very bullishly, so I was very aggressive with it. But you'll notice that I always am looking for these pullbacks to get on. I'm never buying, you know, at the peak up here or at a peak up here. Once news is released, I always want to wait for those pullbacks to come our way. And then after that, we got locked and loaded in situation and ended up being able to be really patient here in the close. You'll notice that I did close on my trades about 40, 30 or 40 minutes before market close. And that's because just like we often see re market reversals after 30 minutes of trading, 30 to 60 minutes of trading, we also often will see market reversals before um, 30 to 60 minutes before market close as well. In this case, everything just closed really strongly though. And it was a fantastic trade for us. So Netflix was all about the trades. Initial downtrend, we were short. As soon as I saw that selling to start to slow down a little bit, I switched my position and I got long there. Um, and this is uh, TIFF. TIFF was a huge winner for us. Now TIFF, you'll notice, did not at all react midday like uh, Netflix did. Okay, And that's because this had a real negative catalyst. Okay, And this is so important to understand when we're talking about catalyst. You always want to be trading the right catalyst. TIFF here was an earnings loser. All right. And uh, you'll notice, I actually, let me, uh, I ended up making about $1,900 on this on this name alone today. Let me go ahead to the next chart. It'll be a little bit more clear because I want you guys to see the pre-market action so you can see why I started to short this when I did. I traded this very aggressively to the short side. And um, I ended up covering midday after the Fed news was announced. And I just wanted to exercise my capital to the long side. But you'll see that this ended up staying down here and actually provided some pops later in the day for us to potentially get re-short on. And I totally would have gotten reshort on that, but I was just too busy exercising my capital to the long side with Netflix trades and um, and uh, you know some other trades that we're going to talk about. Now, why did I decide to get short TIFF here? You'll see this is these were my initial short entries on TIFF. I got short um, about 300 shares initially here. Well, the reason why is we always want to look at this pre-market action. Notice this pre-market peak and resistance level here. Okay, this was at the 90 uh, about the 96 dollar level. Well, at market open. We got a gift of a pop from TIFF, T-I-F. Now, it's very common that when a stock makes a very exaggerated movement one way or the other, notice this is what we have a big gap down. This is when they announce earnings and look how far it gapped down. Well, when we get a very exaggerated move one way or, the, or another, it's very common that stocks will have an adverse reaction and a volatile reaction at market open um, the, in the opposite way. There's a couple reasons for that. One is that um, anyone who was short on this name and you know, woke up this morning and saw their massive profits, they would want to panic cover at market open and lock in their profits. Secondly, uh, you know, anyone um, who potentially thought, hey, this name looks cheap, you know, I've been waiting for an opportunity to buy Tiffany, maybe down at $94, $93, they're gonna gobble up these shares. And they, they typically will do that within the first 30 minutes or so. Well, after that first 30 minutes, that's when the catalyst and the importance of the catalyst kicks in. In this case, it was a very negative catalyst, poor earnings, and you'll notice I got short 300 shares and then I added another 300 shares. I covered a little bit, but then I added again. I ended up being in this uh, position 900 shares for the majority of the day. And I just kept being aggressive, adding to it as it broke under critical levels. And look at this strong downtrend. And uh, I ended up covering, remember the Fed news came out, I don't know, probably about right here or so. I would say right here, I'm missing some of the chart. Uh, but it came out about right here is when markets spiked out. And then that's when I covered the rest of uh, my TIFF short here, this is Tiffany and Company, and I uh, just set aside it, then I was done with it. I was very pleased with how I traded, I was done with it, very much negative downtrend. But being able to short a negative catalyst on any early morning strength has really been a big payout here in the, in this recent market. Okay, next let's talk about CRM here. CRM was a really awesome trade for us today because I got to trade it to both the short and long side, just like Netflix. Remember I talked about being able to pivot is super important in these markets as news comes out and things like that. So my initial trade here on CRM, I actually shorted it here in pre-market. I don't, um, oh, I think I show it on the next slide. Let's go Let's go ahead and jump to the next slide. But I did trade for about $1,200 in profits or so. Um, oh, I wanna show, this was actually on our watch list the night before, okay? This was on our watch list the night before, then we'll get into the trade. This is CRM, I sent this out to everyone the night before, okay? I said I wanna long this under 134 and I wanna short it if it breaks over 140 and you can, you know, get a little more specific and read exactly how I wanted to play it. But I mentioned, look, I mentioned this. I say, uh, let's see here. I'll be up early at 7 a.m. Eastern time to look for entries and get a short entry in. I want to scale into as much as 600 shares in this, but I'll start initially with 150 shares in pre-market. Well, guys, look exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. Look at my short here, 150 shares here in pre-market. I woke up real nice and early, well before market opened. 
And I got my short and I ended up covering it for, you know, about, I don't know, dollar thirty move here to the downside on the initial morning sell off. I was very pleased. Now, remember, CRM was actually an earnings winner. OK, so this actually was strongly gapping up. This is the exact opposite of TIFF. And uh, I wanted to play the overreaction. I felt that this name got bought way too heavily initially um, after the positive earnings. And I wanted to play this this initial uh, action to the downside. So you'll notice my initial entry on this was short. I wasn't in overly heavy, just 150 shares. You know, then my first trade was, you know, I don't know, 180, 200 bucks or so of profit, which is a solid trade. But then you'll notice that the same thing happened. Just like Netflix, I switched to a long bias. I did the same thing in here. I bought 200 shares of CRM. Now there's a couple reasons why I did this. The first reason is that I wanted long exposure. Okay, I was heavily short on TIFF. Let me go back to TIFF. Let me remind you guys how I was really heavily short on TIFF and being very aggressive about that. I mean, look at how I was adding to this, adding, adding, adding to my short, okay? Because I was heavily short on TIFF, I wanted to make sure that I had what I call a little bit of long exposure or a little bit of what we also refer to as a long hedge. It means I'm kind of covering my bet in case something happens in the markets or in case, you know, there's some strength that comes from the markets um, on protected, you know? So that way, if TIFF, even if TIFF did spike, I'm hedged here with a stock that has a solid positive uh, earnings catalyst. So you remember, even though this is down here, it looks like it's way down. It's actually very green on the day, you know, up seven, $8 or so still on the day. So I wanted to get long exposure. Now you'll notice my initial buy here was at 134.15 and then 132.66. So I was sitting in here 400 shares. I then decided to scale out a little bit here. Um, my average was uh, you know, down here at, at about this level and I just wanted, I was in 400 shares. I felt a little like I had maybe a little bit too much long exposure. So I reduced it a little bit. I reduced my hedge a little bit. And then we got the Fed news release. Now I actually ended up buying this basically like 30 seconds before I actually knew about the Fed news release. And that's because I wanted to buy over this critical breakout level. Do you see this high right here? That I believe was 133.80. So I laid it in the chat room. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna re-add to CRM over 133.80. So I bought over 133.80 and that just happened to be almost the exact same time that Fed news was released. And look at this thing run. I ended up taking profits, you know, up near um, around the 136 area, but I was just so pleased. This ended up continuing all the way up to 140 in after hours and end of day, right? So you might think of that like, wow, you left so much on the table. No, I played this very safe. I was very, very happy and and, and pleased with, with how I traded that. It was just an awesome, awesome day. So big important lesson today is, is being able and willing to pivot. Remember CRM, I was short initially on, short pre-market covered here. Netflix, I was short initially on. But most of the money today was ended up being made to the long side. Let's go ahead and take a look at some members. Awesome profits today. Take, take a look at Roadster here. This is only a second day in with us, up almost three grand today. Very happy for him. Take a look at Ruben, up seven hundred dollars today. Gonzo, um, up. Uh, he said it's one of his best days since he started day trading, and he later sent out his actual profits, which I think was over two thousand uh, dollars. Very pleased for him. Uh, we have some more here. Take a look at Hunter, up twenty five hundred or so on the day. So it was just an awesome day for us. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Lesson to, uh, to learn from today, don't be stubborn. Be willing to pivot as market sentiment changes, just like we did as that Fed news was released. So uh, I hope this is helpful, and uh, I'll see you all in the trading room tomorrow morning.